Big thanks to Masterbuild for sponsoring this video. All of my friends absolutely love this recipe and today I'm gonna make it especially for you. I can already tell you this involves the best piece of meat that we use on barbecue in this year. 2023 is all about the chuck. <laughs> and it's a big, big piece of meat and i like to buy my pieces of meat as a technical cut and the reason that i do that is because it's going to save me a lot of money on meat if you buy the technical cut it means the butcher doesn't have anything to do so no processing money is involved and you can walk away with cheap meat now of course i don't need the whole piece so i'm going to cut off a steak for myself and i'm going to save the rest for later on for this recipe i want around a kilogram of meat and look at the inside of this steak. You can see that it's built up from multiple layers of muscle and they all have a good amount of intramuscular fat. This is not the most tender piece of beef, but it's definitely the most flavorful piece of meat. And especially for this recipe, I created a new barbecue rub. Something that really pops, that goes well with beef and tastes freaking delicious. It's totally free. I'm Dutch. Well, it's free on our website. Go check out the recipe or just keep on watching. I'll show you how it's done. It consists of two tablespoons of table salt, half a tablespoon of sugar, two tablespoons of propica powder, two tablespoons of curcuma, two tablespoons of onion powder, half a tablespoon of garlic powder, half a tablespoon of chili flakes, and a teaspoon of ground black pepper. Mix it up and then it looks like this. I'm calling this the Tweety Rub. If you have a better name for it, you can always try and convince me, but I'm not sure if that's gonna work out. Of course, I'm gonna make sure that my chuck steak is well coated with this beautiful barbecue rub, and then I'm gonna let it sit on my board for around 10 minutes. And the next step to create this beautiful recipe is to fire up the barbecue. And this one is special. This is the Master Build Portable Smoker. And this is gonna be my new toy for this summer. You know what the cool thing is about this thing? The price. <laughs> Look, shipping to the Netherlands, the price with the cart, but check out the price without the cart. 165. <laughs> that, that is, nowadays for a barbecue, that is super, super cheap. But hold on, Marison, you put the link down below? So, okay. The link's down below, so you can buy it. Of course, we get a portion of that, the Villy link. This thing, it's freaking awesome because you got a little tray right here. That's where the charcoal goes. And then you turn this knob to turn it on and it can run on batteries. So if you have a boat or you like to go camping or I don't know, whatever you can come up with, you can put this in your car. Then you have the smallest smoker with the largest cooking surface for a small amount of money. Stop talking, just do it. Yeah, but it's, it, it is so cheap. Yeah, yeah but light I'm, it up, man. But it's my favorite topic. But light it up, show me. Yeah, it's too easy. This is too easy. Take one of these tumbleweeds, stick it in here, work it underneath, place it here, light it up. I'm just gonna take a few pieces of charcoal and I wanna start with the smaller pieces. And I just dumped them in. I got this yesterday, this thing is, like, I, this thing is already on the market for like a year or so, but I just got this yesterday. I put it together and I was, I, I was like instantly fell in love. And the next thing that I'm going to do is take off the card, like in the next cook. I'm going to take off the card, clean it up, and I can use it on my table. And that's what I really want. I want something that I can just put in a cabinet. And then once I want to use it, I'm just going to take it out or I'm going somewhere with friends and family. I want to, I don't know, grill up some sausage, a burger or smoke for a very, very long time. It can do it all. I'm going to give the fire starter a little time to burn up and to get the charcoal lit. Then I'm going to close the flap and turn it on. The fan is blowing and I've got the ventilation in the back opened up all the way and I want to get the temperature up. Now the charcoal's already lit, so that's not something that it has to do. It just needs to get the charcoal up to temperature and get the whole thing up to temperature. Now I'm not sure yet how or where to fine tune it, but I wanna take it slow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep my eye on it, check what it's doing, see what needs to be done. For instance, like dial back the fan on how hard it's blowing. And then once I got that fixed, I'm going to close the back vent with just a little bit of space open. And once I got the temperature dialed in, then all I need is a little bit of smoke. So apparently the chunk is a little bit too big. <laughs> it doesn't fit yet with the charcoal, but 
take a look in this firebox. See what's happening right there. The fan is pushing to get this thing a lot of energy. Now, and I know that on this side, there's a sensor that controls the temperature. So what I want to do is I'm going to split the chunk of smoke wood up and put it in with the charcoal. Close the lid, set the fan to a low position, low temperatures, because we're going to be smoking. I'm super, super excited. I don't know about you, this is going to be freaking awesome. It literally took around a minute or so for the fan to shut down and that the barbecue reach its temperature. So time to put our beautiful chuck steak on. And of course, I want to keep my eye on the chuck steak. So I'm going to stick in the thermometer just to make sure I got the temperatures right. There we go. Let's close the lid. And we're going to run this at a temperature of around 120 degrees Celsius. And of course, we need a barbecue sauce. So I'm going to make, I'm going to make Coca-Cola barbecue sauce. My Coca-Cola barbecue sauce. It starts with a cup of ketchup, a cup of Coca-Cola. Why did they make the small cans? This is only a cup. Two tablespoons of bastard sugar. Okay, Google. What is bastard sugar in the Engels? In Engels, it's spelled caster sugar. Caster sugar. Nee, thank you. Now, I wanted to add this ingredient. This is uh, Seel's burinnetje. It is a beet sugar, otherwise known as molasses. For all the Dutch people that don't think we have molasses, this is our molasses. And the reason that I'm using this is because it has so much flavor. Two tablespoons of this will make your barbecue super sweet and very, very tasty. It's just going to give you that depth of flavor that you otherwise wouldn't have had. Of course, I'm going to add Worcester sauce. Mooi zo, waarom geef je mij een leeg flesje Worcester sauce? Now we're going to add two tablespoons of Worcester sauce and makes everything taste like barbecue sauce. I'm going to let this reduce until I have a thick syrupy consistency that actually looks like a barbecue sauce. That's going to take around 10 to 15 minutes of slow boiling until you get there. My chuck steak has been smoking for an hour and I already checked and I love the way the color looks on the chuck steak. Now color is very, very important with what I'm looking for because color means that we picked up smoke flavor. That's the red color you see popping through the color of the dry rub. So that tells me that now that I've got the color, I also have the smoke flavor. Basically, it's time to stop worrying about adding smoke flavor and start focusing on getting this thing cooked. So I'm going to take it off the barbecue, place it in a tray, add a little bit of my barbecue sauce, cover it with aluminum foil, put it back on the barbecue. And while we got the barbecue open, we might as well check the charcoal level. And as you can see, we burned down about one third of the charcoal and I'm going to add a little bit more so I can finish off the rest of the cook. And while the chuck steak was smoking, I figure out the best way to dial this in at a stable temperature. And that is when I have the top vent set open to about half a finger. And in the front, I've got the dial set in to the third stripe. And this thing smokes like a diesel locomotive. It is super, super stable. In about an hour, I reached the core temperature of 96 degrees Celsius of the chuck steak, which means we need to take a look at it and see if it's done. Wow. <laughs> you can see why I put this in a tray now. There's so much juices that we captured by putting it in a tray and all of the flavor and moisture stayed in the tray, keeping our steak absolutely freaking delicious and tasty. The fat has rendered out. We still have our smoke flavor. We got the rub flavor and we've got the sauce flavor. Now it's time to take the steak out of the tray. Oh, look at that. It's falling apart on me. Stay together, stay together. Yes. Let's get that thermometer out. What I want to do now is just to check to see if this is really done. You can see by just pinching in it, it already falls apart. Of course, it's screaming hot. I now know that it's done. I can tear it up easily with my hands, but I'm not going to because we are making chuck steak burned ends. And that means I'm going to cube this up. Look at that. So tasty, beautiful smoke ring, beautiful crust on the outside. And I'm going to go for bite-sized chunks. They don't have to be perfect. And look at all that beautiful rendered out meat. Juicy and tender. Wow. I could eat it as is right now. And this is going to go on a tray. Let's put that delicious barbecue sauce on. And as you can see, it's now nice and syrupy. Make sure every little piece gets a nice layer. Now this is all sauced up. And what I want from this 
is that it's going to get a sticky, crunchy exterior, which means I'm gonna raise up the temperature and burn up a little bit of the outside. So I wanna go all the way to dried up sticky and then go a little further and make sure that it gets like this little. So this is going to go back on the barbecue. I raised up the temperature in the barbecue to 150 degrees Celsius and I let the meat roast for about 30 minutes. And now I've got that beautiful color that I'm looking for, that dark red. This is what I need if I'm talking about chuck steak burned ends. Let's take this off the barbecue and plate it up. Get those beautiful chunks onto the plate. And this meat falls rather heavy on the stomach. So I would say that around 200 grams of meat per person is more than enough. It's gonna be more than enough. Is what you shoot is uh, Yes, this is, I know this is what I'm saying as an advice. 200 grams is more than enough. However, if you're hungry, you could eat the whole thing. And then sprinkle on a little bit of the barbecue rub just to finish it off. This is what all my friends call me for if they want some delicious barbecue food. Mmm, sweet, beefy, delicious, fall apart tender, melt in your mouth, and then you get that juicy chuck steak burned ends.